Now, how did we get here? How did this happen? How did 64% of our income and rising? How did this happen? And it's legal. I'll tell you how it happened. Does anybody know who was elected? Woodrow Wilson was elected president. You know why he was elected president? He was offered support by the banking interest if he was willing to sign the Federal Reserve Act, which he did. In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act becomes law. You know what happened? 20 years later, the country was bankrupt. It took 20 years to bankrupt the United States when the banks took over via the Federal Reserve, which, by the way, is about as federal as Federal Express. The Federal Reserve is a private banking organization that is enslaving the nation and the world. It's important to realize they are a private bank. They're not federal. It's like if my name was Federal Reserve Miller. It doesn't make me part of the federal government. It's a facade. It's a joke. It's a lie. Now, in 1933, after we went bankrupt, two things happened. There was the 1933 gold seizure. The United States took all gold bullion from citizens, all of it, under the threat that if you didn't, you would go to prison for 10 years. So this is a great, great scam. They took all the gold from all the people, and then they initiated what became in 1936 the social security system. The social security system is nothing more than a debt to the Federal Reserve. We were bankrupt in 1933. By 1936, social security was implemented because the United States has a debt to the Federal Reserve. What do you put down as collateral? They put down their own citizens. We were put down as collateral to a debt to the Federal Reserve. Also, I need to remind you to clear a path on the sidewalk so people can get through. Um, we're estimating over 500 people at this event. Um, there's only one news station, two that I saw out here, so it's no big deal. It's a small day in uh, Missoula. At 1 o'clock, we're going to take the tea. There's a few boxes of tea bags a little over here by one of the trees. Go ahead and deposit your tea bags in there. Feel free. We're going to bring them to Tester Bacchus and Reberg's office and show them how angry we are at this. Who can tell me the last president who actually wanted to get us back to the gold standard so that there's actually something backing your money? Who actually wanted to end the Federal Reserve? Anybody can tell me who that president is? JFK! John F. Kennedy. And what happened to him? This is a guy who wanted to end these programs. He wanted to give freedom and independence back to everybody. But he couldn't because people more powerful than him are get us, getting us involved in these things. I have in my hand a copy of the Constitution. Right now in this country, this document doesn't really have any bearing. You've got programs where the banks run the money system. You've got programs like the Patriot Act, which makes this completely irrelevant. But what can any... Article 1, Section 2 of this document says that all taxes must be apportioned the federal income tax is a direct, unapportioned tax. It's unconstitutional and, oh, by the way, if you've read Bill Benson's book, The Law That Never Was, the 16th Amendment was never properly ratified. He put it in without ratifying the thing. You've got states on there like Ohio, which weren't even part of the Union. How can you ratify a, an amendment if you're not even in the Union? Right now, there is more banking controlling this country than this document. We need to get back to this. Taxing isn't evil. Taxing without representation is evil. It's direct slavery. Can anybody tell me? The minimum wage over 70 years ago was about the equivalent of today's $19 an hour. But because we got rid of the gold standard, and the only thing that gives your money is how much of it's in circulation, Look at where the minimum wage is today. The power has been taken away from the people and it's been put directly in the hands of the central banking interests. You want to say something, man? And the Fed, man. Mom and dad spend more money than they have? No. 
Does our government spend more money than it has? Yes. This is exactly what Jefferson and Hamilton were warning us about. This is exactly why Andrew Jackson was concerned with creating a central bank, because they saw what would happen. And what you have is what's happening right now. The people are being enslaved. And I think it's rightfully so that we're angry about it. If you're not enraged, you are not informed. So let me ask the question again. Who's mad about taxation in this country? I'm not mad on behalf of my children. So far, I'm tax-free. So what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Give it to him. Go ahead. So what do we do about this problem? You need to end the Federal Reserve. End the Fed. End the problem. Texas, believe it or not, has a system that kind of works. Because Texas is the only state, when they join the union, demanded that they actually own their property, demanded that they have low taxes, demanded rights for their citizens, demanded gun ownership no matter what. Right now there's 10 bills in the house for gun control, and that's an unrelated issue. But it all comes down to the central banks, folks. All of it. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet